Hey Grinders, I'm here, Garrett here, sitting here with Spencer and Daniel from Under Oath. Guys, welcome back to Australia. Are you enjoying it so far? Absolutely, man. Really Stoked enjoy? to be here. So you guys are here originally for Soundwave, but you're also doing a couple Sidewaves. So you're also doing a headlining show at the Hi-Fi Bar in Melbourne. Uh, you're playing with Dream on Dreamer and the Smoking Hearts, and you're also playing with them at the Factory in Sydney? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, so basically, um, how's Soundwave going so far? I know you've played two shows already. Everyone getting a good crowd? Everyone enjoying it? The, the crowds are insane. Uh, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. There could have fit, been another person fitting in the area on both days, which is great yeah. for us. Um, the first day we had some technical difficulties, you know? Yeah. You, you get all the way over here and, and your stuff sometimes doesn't like to work so yeah. well. Just being, you know, 10 years of banging around for a long time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Sydney was great, man. That's good. And I think we got all the technical issues out of the way, yeah. so now the rest of the tour should be awesome. So Melbourne's the next show, the next Soundwave show for yeah. you guys? we play Melbourne up. tonight, headlining, and yeah. then we play Melbourne uh, In a couple Soundwave. days. Soundwave, yeah. yeah, that's really exciting. So on your new, um, on your latest record, um, what kind of reception have you been getting? Have you noticed any, you know, at shows people really going off for the new stuff, or? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every record we have has it's songs that yeah. people respond to more, obviously. And I, I just feel like it's because there's videos for them, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, we try to play the songs people want to hear off all the records. Even though there's ones that we might like more, I think, at least on this tour, we're kind of trying to play more songs that, you know, just to make our fans happy. Because we, we don't get to come over here all the time. And we're going to Asia after this to places we've never been. And we just felt like, this tour maybe will make the set list a little less about us. Yeah, playing <laughs> yeah. playing a bunch of old stuff and and because the at Soundwave the set is fairly short, shorter than what we're used to, we have to be very selective about the songs that we play. It's two so. two songs off each record. Yeah, two songs. Yeah, that's well, that's well, pretty good. Yeah, basically two songs off each of the last three records. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's only seven songs, so it doesn't. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to pick, I guess, then. Yeah, yeah you just play yeah. your... Play the, the ones goods. that... Everyone knows. The, yeah, the, the kids love, you know. Yeah. Well, speaking of... Um, you actually brought it up. Speaking of your last three records, I mean, your, all your records have just been amazing, but with these last three, you know, they've you guys have just come leaps and bounds. Like, it's just amazing the difference. Like, And I was listening to the, the newest record, and I was just... You can just hear it straight away with the first song, with Indivision, and just... I mean, especially you, your vocals, man, they've just gone insane. And Thank you. Do you think it's because you've gotten, you know, all the creative control has gone your way now when it comes uh, to that? No, I just think as we get older, you know, like, I think it's, it, you try to outdo yourself every time. Mm. I feel like that's, that's kind of how I've always been as a singer or a songwriter or a guitar player even. And I feel like that's kind of been a goal with Under Oath. We, yeah. We're even talking about writing stuff right now, and it's just, it's like, if it's not better than what we did before, then... Why do it? Yeah, why, why do, do it? it? Yeah. So we push ourselves pretty hard. Uh, take it pretty serious, you know, while still having fun. That's it. And, um, you know, I got to say, man, like, I love the new record, but Paper Lung has just got me. Like, it's <laughs> it's weird. Like, I keep listening to it, and That's every time I listen to it, like, yeah, it, yeah. Just, it just hits me. Like, it's so, it's like dark and eerie, but at the same time, it's beautiful. And then yeah. when you come in towards the end with those screamings, it's, yeah. it screams, it's just unreal. It's just like... That that one, so. That's one of my favorites on yeah, the record as well. Love but it. to back up a little bit, it's four records we're playing off of, right? Yes. I said three, I meant four. Four. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Eight From chasing songs. safety all the way to disambiguation. Yeah. Beautiful. So. And, um, you know, Daniel, you were originally, well, you came from Norma Jean. How, how do you feel with the transition? Did, was it a little hard coming into a band that's pretty well established, or was it just you guys just clicked straight Yeah, away? we clicked. We'd been friends for a long time. We kind of yeah. grew up together playing touring together like 10 years ago. We so. actually used to open up for Norma Jean all the time. Norma Jean. So yeah. yeah, we were, we had been good friends for a long time and uh, when they called, it wasn't, yeah, I just, can't, they called me and I was down in Florida like two or three days later practicing and it, within the first couple of days we were like already clicked, it felt clicked. great. And, and so the whole, because I was going to ask yeah, the recording just, process did just. We just immediately started writing songs. Yeah. Like, we didn't worry about, oh, do you know these old songs? We didn't yeah. even rehearse like, one old song until before we went on tour. Yeah. We had to. We, it was we went straight to writing. From the first day I got there, it was like writing the new record, and we spent the next six, five or six weeks together writing, 
had a day or two off, went straight into the studio, recorded the record, day or two off, and straight on my first tour. That's awesome. So, like, that's, that's really good when things work out that way. Um, I'll get to a couple fun questions, might as well have some fun ones. You are a large band, it's the six of you, you know, um, not with the Australian tour, but when you're touring, you know, say like Warp Tour, just going on a massive tour in America and you're stuck on that bus, does th do things get a little crazy with you guys? Does anyone get cabin fever? I wouldn't say cabin fever, we're pretty used to it. You yeah. Know? Uh, it's better, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than being six dudes in a van, <laughs> that's for sure, so I'm pretty sure. And dudes have kind of mellowed out to a oh, degree, yeah. so like, back in the day, I mean, I'm not only speaking for Under Oath, but like, my old band too, like, things, we all would get into crazy stuff. Yeah, we'd mess like, with each other. Always doing stuff. Yeah. yeah. But now it's just kind of like everybody kind of does their own thing and... A little bit more grown up. Yeah, I mean, we all hang toy. out all the time, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, there's not as much uh, funny business happening, I guess. So, like, you're playing... Um, you know, a venue tonight, and then you're playing an outdoor festival. Is there a difference? Do you prefer one or the other? Do you prefer playing outdoors as opposed to indoors? Well, and is there a different vibe when you go out? I think indoors is better because it sounds better. Yeah. Outdoor, it, it, something like Soundwave, outdoors is also better because you can get more people yeah. to see you, and they'll be walking by and just, oh, I'll just, you know, if they, if they like what they hear, they just stop, and your crowd just kind of grows throughout the set, which is really cool. But uh, indoors is, yeah, it sounds better. You can have lights, you can, feels more like a show. More yeah, there's, there's yeah. definitely benefits to both. So it's hard to say which one's better because they both have really good pros, you know? So, yeah, I couldn't pick one over the other. Do you guys have um, any rituals or anything, like, as a group or individually that you have, like, you kind of do before you go on? Lots of stretching. I do. About 15 minutes of vocal warm-ups. That's about it. I mean, we'll get together and do a little, We do like, a little, like, uh, hands in on three and just go. make up something it's on something the spot. different every day. Yeah. It's different every fun. time. We actually didn't do that in uh, Brisbane. Brisbane. Oh. Because everything was so messed up. Yeah, we, we started 15 minutes late and... Had to because, cut our set in half, which yeah. was already 30 minutes long, so we... <laughs> We played like three songs. Yeah, that was crazy. But Did it go all right though? Everything. Was yeah, fine. I mean, everything was. We had no monitors yeah. or anything, so we had no idea what we were doing. It went we as went good as it possibly <laughs> could. Yeah, That's it. with all with all the difficulties. The toughest show I've probably done in ten years. That's the toughest show. Yeah, it Is was it? just everything. Nothing worked. You know. How do you get back from that? Does it just um, you know when you arrive to the to the venue or to the the showgrounds and like you hear that you know you got to cut your set in half, your sounds off things just aren't going what you want. Does it, does it mess with you right before you get on? I mean, it, it all happened right before we got on. Yeah, you, you it was like... Up. It's like, okay, we got there to play. Ten minutes before we were going to go on, they're like, oh, the monitors aren't working. Oh, this and that and this. And they kept trying to fix it. And then it came three o'clock when we were supposed to go on. They're still frantically trying to get everything together. Fifteen minutes later... We're like, we just have to play. We don't care what's working, what's not, and got out there and did a couple songs. Yeah, we just had to go and with it. You know? I mean, there's nothing you can do, so you can't let it, like, bum you out for yeah. very long. Might as well keep the kids happy. Yeah. Play something. But yeah. How, do you, how do you decide what, you know, what songs you get to play? We, we didn't really. We just kind of went out there. and It was on the fly. Yeah, it was just on the fly. We just, we had a set, the set list we were supposed to play, and we were just like... We're like, okay. We have guitar changes because of different tunings, and basically the guitar yeah. that was working, we just picked three songs that was in that tuning, and we just went with it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it like, but it was fine. Yeah. It was good. Um, well, um, you know, 2012 is supposed to go down in history as the big year. What's uh, What are the plans for Under Oath? Any, any plans to get back in the studio anytime soon? Or Yeah, uh, I think we're supposed to be writing a little bit soon. Yeah. Uh, we've got some touring for the next little bit, so... I think when that's all done, we'll come home and start getting back to it. Yeah, we're doing South America in May, and then some random like one-offs around the U.S. Um, and in that time, we'll probably in the summer get back into the practice space and write. Well, guys, thanks for joining us, and yep. um, good luck with the rest of the year. Good luck with the rest of the tour. Hope it works out for you. Yeah, thanks Thank you. a lot. Okay.